Nation's Livestock and Diets in Timor-Leste through a sequential mixed methods approach. Welcome, Gianna. Thank you so much. To me, to, I'd just like to share that today is a special day for me. It's 11th of September, and this commemorates um, the million struggles for democracy. This is the day that in 1714 we lost our succession war um, in, in Catalonia and in Spain, and it's also the day that Chile lost its democracy to the dictator of Pinochet in 1973. So I'd just like to share that today, because I'm a, I'm a proud Catalan, so <laughs> I need to share that. Um, okay. So thanks for the opportunity to present this interdisciplinary work, um, which will be one chapter of my thesis. Um, and I'll select the knowledge of support from our supervisors, Natasha Stacey and um, Julie Brindelcom, as well as from uh, my funders, CDU, the BCFM Foundation, and my research partners, the Ministry of Agriculture and the Fisheries of Timor-Leste, and the uh, NGO Government Services. So, the key issue, in relative or less, the majority of the population are smallholder uh, small farmers who raise livestock as a livelihood strategy. This means that they <coughs> access income, a lot of families sell some uh, livestock and some crops. Um, however, diets consistently lack protein, which is a bit of a paradox because there's lots of animals around. Um, and child malnutrition is extremely high, with one in two children as standard. And so, one of the reasons for child malnutrition is due to poor dietary intake, so what people eat. So since in low and middle income countries, women are key mediators in the pathways between agricultural inputs, uh, intra-household resource allocation, and child nutrition, I set to investigate this issue, so children's poor dietary quality, uh, to understand if women's agency is a mediating factor between livestock production uses of income and dietary outcomes. So this is the main framework that I'm using, which conceptualizes the pathways between agricultural uh, livelihoods and programs uh, for nutrition and health. And so agricultural livelihoods um, can increase the amount of food <coughs> they use, the amount of income access for families, and that can result in, uh, in the diet. But what about women's empowerment? What women have to do with this process? So <coughs> first, there's extensive evidence that um, women's empowerment and child nutrition are strongly associated. So women with higher uh, levels of education uh, and income, as well as um, autonomy levels, tend to have children that are better known. Also, the literature shows that resources are not necessarily pulled together between men and women in the same household. And so there, are, in many contexts, there's different distribution patterns depending on bargaining power. So often we find that uh, in some contexts, women uh, tend to dedicate the income that they control for education and health, whereas men tend to put more into um, spending more into personal needs. And so agency, it's a key component of women's empowerment, and it's understood as the capability to influence or make decisions, to voice viewpoints, and to behave autonomously. Agency mediates the relationship between access to resources, like livestock and income, and the desired achievements, like nutrition and dietary outcomes. So this study aims to examine gender relations in agriculture, particularly women's agency, related to livestock, has been green sale, as well as onto animal source foods uh, access and consumption among farmers in Timor Leste. And why focusing on animal source foods, like meat, eggs, or fish, well, they are highly nutrient uh, foods that, uh, for, particularly for children, that consume a cereal or tuber-based diets, have a huge potential to increase and improve their nutritional <coughs> status. So the setting of these studies in four um, rural uh, villages in the east uh, of this post-conflict nation, and the research engaged CDNEP participants, which was a, pro well, was a program focused on nutrition education and agriculture diversification, which also included a chicken vaccination campaign, and it was targeting mothers with young children. 
But I'd like to clarify that I wasn't doing an impact evaluation of this program. It was just an engagement platform in order to be able to uh, engage with participants in communities and investigate further these issues. The, the, as the program was much, much larger, it was working in 49 um, villages. So, my methods and engagement strategies. So, we used a, a mixed methods um, approach, uh, and so the quantitative component, we used a cross sectional survey, uh, which was administered to both mothers and um, male adults living in the same household through this tool called the Abbreviated Women's Empowerment in Agriculture Index, to which I'll refer as the AYI. We also expanded it with further questions. And so this is an international validated tool that measures the empowerment, um, agency, and inclusion of women in the agriculture sector, which is um, very relevant in many of um, developing nations. Um, and it was created in 2002 by the Oxford Poverty and Human Development Initiative, uh, in collaboration with the International Food Policy Research Institute. And there's been a lot of literature uh, coming out from this, but it's never been used in the before. So we also assessed longitudinal livestock production and dietary intakes of mothers and children throughout the seasons. And so we did four data points in one year to assess how seasonality was affecting consumption. The qualitative components is the same structured interviews with mothers, husbands, and families, as well as key informants to explore social norms on decision making as well on, on how uh, animal source foods are distributed within households. So this is a sequential design uh, which enabled the interpretation of the quantitative findings to qualitative analysis. Uh, and so the interviews were done at the very end of the uh, data collection process and the content was adapted through the findings that we were uh, finding along the way. Um, I'd like to also share that seasonality was very important as the uh, majority of, or many of uh, farming households rely on brain-fed agriculture, uh, and so cropping systems also change throughout the seasons, um, and also it makes it more vulnerable to climate variability. So logistical um, and linguistic challenges also inform the many complexities during fieldwork, uh, particularly during the wet and lean season in January, um, where there was, you know, we couldn't actually access one of the communities because there were big river crossings, uh, and also combined with having participants for three distinct language groups. Uh, this is the boring stuff. We sampling strategy. We ended up selecting uh, four um, <coughs> villages uh, with an animal component, and stratified by district and geographical location. And so we had two villages in the coast and two villages in the inland in two districts. We sampled uh, 200, um, the sample size of 200 households, uh, which accounted for a 20% participant local break, <coughs> and in which we selected 50 mothers in each of these villages. Um, and this sample size was calculated to um, detect the difference of how the food group across seasons, which is relevant to another of my PhD chapters. And we also obtained ethics both here in Australia and in Timor Leste to undertake the research. So institutional partnerships enable the effective engagement of local authorities and participants. We develop close collaboration with the Ministry of Agriculture and Fisheries, particularly the Livestock and Veterinary uh, Director General, um, as well as with the Timorese Research Ethics Committee and the international NGO um, with the two implementing partners. Uh, and so they supported uh, with letters and trusted relationships the engagement with communities and. Um, and that was essential to be able to go and speak with, uh, with participants. So, uh, so data collection was supported through a team that was recruited from a local NGO in Baokao. Uh, they were skilled in Tetun and in Makasai, uh, which I, sort of, yeah, Makasai, I <laughs> can really understand it. So it was essential for, you know, to find um, uh, a team that was you know, skilled in, in, in one of the languages of half of the participants because people feel more comfortable talking their mother tongue. Um, and also they were uh, experienced in public use surveys. So that was great working with them. And it, this team, it also made it most cost effective than recruiting a team from Dili because they were already there as it was our sort of base. And also it provided some uh, employment opportunities to more regional areas, which is great. Um, and we were going to the field three to four weeks at a time, four times in one year, so uh, the people who work from Bacar also made it easier for them in terms of um, even managing their family life. 
And so the collaboration between stakeholders and the deep engagement uh, with the field team benefited the iterative research process and findings interpretation. Okay, so what did we find? Okay, so in terms of the gender relations in agriculture, these are the results from the AOAI uh, individual empowerment scores. So these data show the percentage of men and women uh, that achieved the adequacy cutoff for each of the six indicators that compose this index. So in other words, the chart uh, reflects the percentage of each indicator that men and women achieved um, the adequacy in terms of uh, being considered empowered. So according to this tool, we found that men and women are, sim are empowered similarly in terms of productive decisions, ownership of assets, and control over uses of income. Which, to be honest, it was a surprise. <laughs> um, but that's the beauty of research. And so, yeah, I'll come to this later, but I'll focus now to, um, um, in the last of the specific um, results. So in terms of how livestock has been doing sales, uh, the expanded survey was, um, showed that the most men and women report joint ownership of male uh, of animals and make productive decisions jointly. Um, however, decision making is nuanced. When further impacting decision making on livestock, um, we found that women were more autonomous to sell eggs and chickens than pigs and to purchase food of smaller value. Um, when we look at livestock uses, poultry uh, was dedicated for income and consumption, uh, and pigs satisfy cultural requirements and uh, income to a smaller degree, whereas larger animals uh, were more often reserved for ceremonial feasts. In terms of animal source food purchases, we found that small household expenditures were considered generally a women's sole domain. Um, by most of the survey participants. However, during the interviews, it revealed um, that many women consult uh, or ask their husband's permission before buying high value foods like fish or eggs. Um, and so, for example, this quote from Mentum Sagadati, say, if we don't have rice, we can't eat. But buying rice, my wife can do it alone. But for non-important foods like meat or eggs, we need to decide together. And so this also suggests um, for insecurity. So, all interviewees describe men as responsible for income generation and the need for prioritizing funds for uh, purchasing rice. Also, some made uh, reference uh, to gender based violence resulting from these processes of negotiation. This is woman from Samadari, um, voiced. So in terms of uh, consumption and diets, gender, di gender differences in the allocation of animal source foods within households were not reported nor observed. Um, and this is contrary to some of the literature that I believe, yeah, uh, we don't, uh, that they just made it up. Um, or, or it's not representative of the whole practices of the country. Um, we also found that around half interviewees described eating meat uh, during ceremonies, when hunting, or when animals die, and they never purchased it. Um, one mother reported prioritizing uh, eggs to children, which also was corroborated by um, uh, the data. So we found in, uh, in the blue, the children and the average kinds of animals as foods eaten across the four seasons uh, between mothers and children, and we found that uh, children ate more eggs and dairy compared to their mothers. Um, and of course, the seasons, we also found that um, um, children consume slightly more animal source foods than their mothers, uh, mostly due to eggs and their differentials. And so, as we can see, the seasonality of the intake of food, and in the dry season, September is the least in these areas where many ceremonies occur. So, finally, also. Uh, um, 15% of mothers and 24% of young children achieved their respective minimum diet levels at the threshold, um, and showing that both children but also mothers uh, consume very poor diets. Okay. So, what we conclude that men and women have similar levels of empowerment in agriculture, in the production, assets, and income domains, and that's measured through this specific tool. And this, uh, so we found that ownership and decision-making among our uh, rural smallholders in Timor is shared 
and this points towards the household as the farming unit. We also found that women display stronger agency in small livestock management despite unequal bargaining power. The decision making on income used for animal source food is nuanced and it's informed by traditional gender norms that frame the men as the income generators and place lower agency among women. We also found that animal source food intake and that the diversity is low and seasonal and ultimately that resources poverty is a structural barrier to uh, for people to access quality diets. In terms of relevance, um, so we found that this AWARE is a valuable tool, yet it's limited uh, in assess the decision making power differentials between men and women, particularly in collectivist cultures like in Timor, where <coughs> the needs of the group may be uh, opposed um, to the individual. And so when this tool was complemented with further inquiry and qualitative methods, nuanced processes of negotiation emerged that the survey alone was, wasn't able to capture. So this indicates that mixed method studies provide more accurate portrays um, of the pathway, uh, gender pathway from agriculture to nutrition outcomes. From an engagement perspective, um, investigations in cross-cultural settings can substantially benefit from collaborative approaches, particularly when examining, examining issues across disciplines. Um, and on policy and programmatic, findings suggest that uh, programs that focus on poultry and pigs for food but also for income I embed, embed large potential to support women's empowerment, poverty alleviation and dietary quality outcomes. And so to conclude, I think it's crucial that our neighboring populations, and all populations, achieve food and nutrition security um, as it is the basis not only for sustainable national development but also for regional stability. And yeah, I'd just like to, you know, to express my deep appreciation to the many participants, my um, research team and multiple organizations involved to make this research a reality.